I'm Killig, and this is our Fabric Limited Edition. We'll load up Alchemy, because that's without a doubt the strongest synth in this. Recording the first one, it's always good to start with a click track, just make sure your initial foundations are in time, you know, otherwise yeah, things get messy Yeah, I think because we're starting start. with the melody as well, rather than starting with drums, trying to make sure that there's at least some sort of rhythm to it and it's in time is important. The delay design is really good for just drawing in sort of your delay, arps and stuff, you know, like. And do some really nice building patterns with it as well, using the feedback tool here in the top right. Step effects, decent for any, I use this all the time on pads, run synths through it. It just is like an effect sequence. That really good for like resonating stuff, adding odd effects, etc. cetera. I think it just takes but, something boring and makes it quite interesting. Yeah, like, you, there's even a lot just the going. presets are decent. Like you could just flick through to a point where you find a nice sort of choppy tremolo sound or something. In terms of EQing it, I'd probably just run again, just a low cut on here, just to make sure that we're not getting anything really messy. Uh, maybe I even just think that this art could work as a transition. Oh, what, it's like a breakdown you know, like Yeah, sort of bus it and then use it as a transition so it's something a little bit sort of bubbles up before a change. Okay, sick. Well, let's maybe put that over here then. So we're just moving this to maybe a, an area where we'd sort of use it in terms of a structure, so maybe there'd be a breakdown here yeah. around sort of this point. Go down to here where it says red, change it to latch, and then basically anything that you touch now will change sort of in real time. So if you play this tune, yeah, I can maybe show you in the automation afterwards, but rolling that down, and it'll just happen there. So you've automatically got that kind of filter sweep. What do you reckon, get a little chord going or something? Just so there's a bit more of a, rhythmic element to it. For time saving purposes, we're gonna just use the presets, I think, for the time being, just so we can get an idea together. But, and I Logic mean, is, again, really nice for presets, I think. And I think even if you have a, an outboard synth, like a DX7 or whatever, and you're gonna layer it up with pads and chords, you're gonna use the presets, because somebody's made the best one there already for, for you. For sure. And I don't think there's any shame in using presets either. Given that we're running with a pretty low budget Mac and, and it's given us CPU problems. What I usually do is freeze things. If there's something you think you're not going to be touching for a while, just sort of double click here and then you can open up freeze and track header components and then it just sort of bounces it on the spot for you. So it will just run at the beginning. There's two sets of 808s and 909s on Logic. There's these ones down here that actually say Roland on it. And then there's ones, if you go through the side, they just say TR. They don't sound like 808s, 909s. They're they're, they're very, I don't know, they just sound very mute and dull. Like, whereas these ones cut through and they click and you hear the bottom and the top end properly, like. Right, so maybe we get a bit of whip going on with the hi-hats. Sometimes I'd like to pan the drums so that it's like you're sat at a kit. So like, even though it's electronic music, maybe sometimes treating it like a real drum kit is kind of important. So yeah, yeah. having the kick in the center, moving your hat sort of to, slightly to the left as though it's here. Like you can have it over your side of the kit or like you're facing it. Mm -hmm. um, maybe even having like your clap or your hats panned, like just makes everything a bit wider. Okay, also something that I never do until it's too late is just to make sure you name your channels. It sounds super basic, but like when you get and you're like 30 channels deep and there's, no, there's nothing there, and you're just looking at names of instruments, then it gets really hard. So just try and a bit of housekeeping is always good. These packs that we're gonna use, I think we're gonna use a couple of them. They're all pretty cheap. Some of them are even like pay what you want. So this Lovecraft, Zed Lovecraft one. Yeah, the Rhythm International one. Is, is wicked. Yeah. So pay what you can basically. I'm not sure when they did it, but. It was just before Christmas, I think. They released really? it and yeah, I think it was, I think it's pay what you want now, but it was free for a bit, just, just free. But yeah, it's just, it's basically all of the Boss DR202 sounds. And it's, nice. so it's, it sounds really, really nice. Yeah. So we're going to have a look at nice that. Layers, and also this, nice uh, this Asquith pack is great. I think he's just dropped another one, but this is, I've kind of been using this to sort of layer up. So there's quite a lot of interesting, like, uh, like dirtier kicks, like heavy. stuff that just, like that kind of nice, sound that, that just, work. lots of heavy, heavy kicks. Uh, another good pack that we've got uh, is this Locked Grooves thing. Um, it's, on other Mono's label, uh, Poly Poly Kicks, I think it yeah. is, and it's just like weird dirt sounds. Like there's some really nice stuff in it, but some of it's proper heavy. But that's 
mechanical. Mm. That's what I'm talking about, that kind of like gritty yeah. shaker. I think having a back catalog of samples is really important. I think going through and just finding stuff like, it could come from anywhere. You could be watching ish, just memes or anything and just be like, that's a cool sound and just save it. I think something I do quite a lot with my phone is just if I'm going around or I hear a cool sound or if something's like, that sounds quite nice. Yeah, yeah. I'll just record it on my phone and just email it to myself. Like, it doesn't have to be like good quality. But often uh, you then just make it. Into you can get a good soundscape from a good walk, five minute walk outside the house. I find loads of samples just from charity shops, vinyls straight away. Go straight in anything that says acapella on it. I'm taking it home. Let's have a go at maybe putting a bit of a structure together, so we can start getting a bit of a song structure happening. Yeah, yeah. And then we'll maybe get a bit of an idea about what, what we're missing. So, all right. I think maybe a good starting point with your song structure is I think to just, let's clear up. what we just up. had was quite nice to start on. Maybe just the pad along with the sub, sort of something quite thick, ethereal opening. All right, let's and then we'll get rid in. of these bits um, that we're not going to use. Did you want to keep that lead bit for the breakdown? Maybe are we sacking the uh, arp off and Try gonna... it, we'll layer it in later. It's important to have some kind of hook to a song, you know, like vocals are always that main thing that to the untrained ear is the is the, the main part, you know? Yeah, 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 for sure. So, I, I mean, think you can get hooks going out of vocals. And I hate to like reference him, but I'm sure I read somewhere Kanye West was like, I make beats out of just voice. Yeah, because yeah. like as a human, when you hear a voice, something makes you go, I like that. Yeah, some of the like, best beats are the ones with incorporated samples and breaths and things in the middle, you know, like mm. Corliss, for example. Have you ever heard that MTI tune? Yeah. That is an unbelievable example of a good use of vocals. Okay, so that is sick. I'm going to use that. Bit of a minor chord, so maybe not this. That's bass with. Bass with Again, that one's quite nice, just for interest. Right, it's not necessarily for everybody, and it took me a really long time to get it. Like, vocals are really hard work. For me now, they're probably my most important tool. I think I really struggle to now make a tune that hasn't got a vocal in and for, to finish it and be like, oh, I'm happy with that. Yeah. But at the time when I first started out, I think processing and editing vocals to a point where you're like, that sounds like something I like. Mm -hmm. And also, never underestimate the power of a really decent sample. Like, you find a good sample, you're like, it's done. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I mean, from experience, I don't really use vocal samples that much. Whenever I have done it, I've either just recorded in something myself and pitched it up so it sounds female or, or pitched it down, you know, done the opposite. So some of the key things that I probably look for in a vocal sample. Tone, I think is important. Certain people's voices, I think, resonate with different people and that's kind of where you can generate your sound from you can make something that's really unique by just having an opinion on stuff that you like don't necessarily try and make something that's oh this sounds like or is similar to because it's been done but just go with what you like because if you like it someone else will probably like it i think people can find meaning in loads of stuff i've got a tune coming out in a few weeks that has got a film like taken from a jake gyllenhaal film where he's talking about missing his dad but that's not how, how I hear it when I listen to it. Like yeah, yeah. certain tunes like completely change I mean, your I opinion on how stuff sounds. I took that really sad quote from 10 Things I Hate About You and yeah, basically yeah. turned like... it into like a spoken word poem over a song just by putting a beat that fit with it and the words fitting in between. For me, a vocal effect is really important. Like it, say you got a really long, nice like and you that add a bit of tremolo. <laughs> well, deep, sorry. Very loud in your ear, probably. No, no, but you put it. a bit of tremolo on something like that, and then suddenly you've got this really nice choppy sort of uh, 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 and things like that, you know? Or mm. like I think I briefly showed you earlier, but one thing I like to do is bus a vocal and then put pitch up the bus so it's plus 12 or get your formants up just pitch it up as much as possible we can and then you get this. this sort of high glittery tail on the back of your reverb yeah i'll show you i wouldn't say hotkeys are massively important i think you'll find that you'll pick a few up along the way that increase like your workflow and things that help but some people I know draw in melodies, so they'll open up like the keyboard thing and they'll just get the pencil and, and draw melodies in and that's cool. I don't think you need to just sit down and read a logic manual and be like, I'm gonna learn all the hotkeys so I can go mad fast. I think you'll know if there's one that you should be using. 
Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, if you've yeah. got a process that you find yourself doing often, you'll be like, there's got to be a faster way of doing that. And then there's usually a hotkey for it. Like, so. Yeah. If you want to yeah. see something mad as well, Joe from Hessel Audio does a, um, there's a YouTube thing where he he's like, he's taken hotkeys to a whole new level where yeah. he's just, he's mapped like his entire keyboard. Oh, I've seen And he's just like, right, if I do this, and he's well. just, because he says he just gets bored really easy and so it increases his workflow. Right, let's see what this is saying. I think maybe that effects box at the end could be a nice little lead-in. And then have we got those toms as well? Yeah, that could be cool. There's a guy on YouTube, um, Andrew Huang, I think his name is. I'm sure you've probably come across some of his stuff. Like, yeah, yeah. he is really interesting to watch when you're thinking about making a beat out of something that's not drums. So being like, oh, okay, I'm gonna take, um, this, is, this is ages ago, but I helped out at a um, like seven to 13 year old summer school once and we did like music text things and uh, we got the kids to make a drum beat out of like found sounds. So they'd mm -hmm. go around and they'd like throw a rock in a lake or they'd be like, we're gonna um, hit a radiator and make like a snare out of it. Yeah, and yeah. it's honestly still some of the most interesting drum kits I've ever heard. <laughs> like, just yeah, people just like... going around being like, I just hit my mate over the head and that's my kick. Like, All right, sick. Yeah, no, like... I used to do loads of stuff like that. Just leave a condenser mic or any type of mic running and then just chuck some pencils around. Think, yeah, another thing to look at is like, if you're struggling and you've got an idea that you're like, okay, that's kind of cool, but then not sure where to take it structurally, <laughs> um, oh. is to just start like muting channels. So like going through and being like, okay, how does it sound without the pad? Like. Also as well, something just to be aware of that's really nice is like playing around with your, your stereo field, just making something move around someone's head. Quite a lot of people now are listening to things in headphones and especially like at the moment, nobody's really listening to stuff on a sound system. So interesting little things in your headphones is always a winner. Definitely. So like taking like your panning and just fucking going wild on it. Like that was maybe a bit drastic, but you kind of get the idea that like, it works. So if you write a pad part, you're gonna write four bars or eight bars, however many, and I often, what I do is to keep things moving is record that four bar so you've got your placeholder at the beginning and at the end of the track, just go through and re-record the entire thing and you might find that there's different notes you can throw in at different points to keep it moving. I think as well, while you're starting out, definitely embrace happy accidents. Like stuff will happen and it'll be like, I have no idea how yeah, I've done that. Definitely. Like, and just go with it, bounce it out, save it, keep it somewhere. Like, cause that's definitely the most interesting stuff. I think the more you learn, you become a bit precious about like, oh, it's got to be done a certain way. I need to make sure like I boost my kick at like 128 hertz. Yeah. Just make sure it's got that little cut out and all like just stupid little mix down things that you can get hook, uh, like stuck up on. That's the best definitely. Thing, at like, the end of the day, logic is an instrument. Like, yeah, yeah. and there's no better way to learn it than just playing with it. Like it's the same for any type of software. I'm sure it's the same for Illustrator and Photoshop and stuff like that. You know, you, you just need to get hands in with it until you discover what it is that works for you. <laughs> like to like just normally I wouldn't bounce down everything like that immediately but sometimes what I will find is now I've got so many different things like Roland Cloud for example is really good like all the Arturia stuff is really nice mm. like things like that but there's so much choice that a fun experiment maybe to be like I'm gonna just use three different things yeah like, and finding that maybe you've just got too much choice and being like I can't finish anything because I don't know what sound I need and I've got so many different sounds to pick yeah. from yeah now what I mean? Oh, just one more forward. I think, and just keep it. Wait, 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 like that. You're just shortening it. Yeah, that's what I am doing. Oh, really? Oh, what, and having it stop before the thing? Yeah. Oh, so sick. Okay, cool. I thought more... you were talking about something completely different. <laughs> like... <laughs> no, sorry, it's my bad. Um, I'm just chopping up this tremolo vocal so it fits with the beat a little bit more. Structure is something you can sit there endlessly on. And yeah, like we're saying, it's important sometimes to go away anyway, if a track is driving you insane, or if you are stuck on a loop and you're like, I'm mm. never gonna finish this. There's absolutely no point in getting yourself frustrated. Just yeah. go away, have and a I think cup of tea. When it, when it doesn't become back. enjoyable anymore, I think just walk away from it for a bit. There's yeah. nothing There's nothing Take wrong with just being like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something else. Like, and forcing creativity as well is just one of those things. Like people talk about you writer's block and things like that it. all the time. Like, just wait, like, Go and do something else until you're like, that's cool, I wanna do something yeah. like that. The guy who produced Metallica's albums was saying on his master channel, he has like a 400 hertz cut of like, yeah. just like a 3 dB kind of thing, like where you are here, like this is kind of like a panic zone. And I mean, especially in like metal music, which is obviously what he's making with Metallica, but it's it's something to look at as well with, with like, <laughs> with like uh, electronic <laughs> music. Like you can, a lot of those sounds can like bog down. Obviously use your ears, like that's 
first and foremost. But I think if you're finding that you're like, oh, it sounds a bit muddy. 230 hertz is a horrible, horrible little frequency around here. 230, 240 is yeah. my cock rim. Right. Everything just is kind of like, mm, doesn't fit right. And 400, you kind of get that boomy, like boxy feel. So oh, yeah, have a little, um, have yeah. a little play around with some of those. But again, use your ears. Get your highs and lows nice right. and clear. All right, let's Nothing have a play bad. through this and see where we're at. Do any last minute adjustments. I'm pretty happy with it. I think like, there's things to this some quality elements in it. I think if we had more time, we'd obviously take things out or um, maybe alter alter some of the things that we've done. Uh, the arpeggiator, I think we could we could make stronger and yeah. Um, I think a lot of it could be beefed up and chopped and changed, obviously. But a lot of this was just us showing an idea of how we get into a track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Over two hours, I think there's a nice little examples into. Yeah, I think we, I think I think it's come out all right. I'm pretty happy with that over two hours. Yeah. Let's bounce it, have a listen, let's stick it on these speakers. Yeah, sweet. And, and get it playing loud. Thank <laughs> you.